Welcome to GC Cars. My name is Eric and this is the Ford F-150 Tremor. So we've already tested the top of the line Raptor, which obviously is a lot more expensive than this Tremor and a lot more capable. But that doesn't mean we don't want to try and see how off-roady this Tremor is, especially because this is about 80 bucks cheaper than the 2022 Silverado ZR2 that we've recently tested, which was stupidly capable for the price. So can the Tremor hold its own against the very, very powerful ZR2 or will it fall short? But that's what we're going to find out, obviously, off-roading this baby a little bit today. And uh, let's start, Jesus, that's hot. Um, <laughs> let's start talking a little bit about the exterior here. So what's different though about the Tremor compared to normal F-150? Well, first of all, visually you see the, the Tremor orange accents that you see on all Tremors Ford produces. I think they look very nice. We have them on the tow hooks as well. And we have the badge, the Ford badge. I wouldn't have been able to tell you if I wouldn't have read it myself because it's so subtle, but it's not dark blue, it's actually black a very important difference but if we actually want to talk about important differences you're going down we have this beefier skip plate right here going nice and low protecting of course our on the body and the transmission and engine bay area if we hit anything or snack and we have the tow hooks nicely available if you need to uh, get out of some muddy situations you find yourself in now of course tires super important we got these 33 inch general grabber tires and uh, some beefier suspension, some vice suspension, giving you a bit, a bit of a lift, a bit more articulation, just, you know, all the stuff you want to have on the trails. And speaking of what you have on the trail, we have made our own experiences with that, uh, twice actually. If you hit your truck on a rock, we have the same steps we have in the Raptor. They don't say Raptor on this one, but it's the same otherwise. And of course, if you hit a rock, these act as kind of rock protection. Now, if you just want to move here over to the back along this uh, very scratched truck right now, don't worry, it all kind of uh, <laughs> washes off in the end. It looks more dramatic than it is. Then really in the back, it is very much a regular F-150. A little high right now for myself, uh, but tow hooks nicely available. And we have the Tremor logo. And of course, just like in the Raptor and all the top tier F-150s, we have a tailgate that not only comes down automatically, that's pretty standard, but also comes up automatically if you might be a little lazy and don't want to do it yourself it's kind of a cool party trick though with that being said the interior it's the same pretty much as we had on the raptor which means i generally like it we don't have the recaros here and i don't think the seats have the perfect amount of support for the lower back overall they're very comfy but especially compared to the newer refreshed silverado and sierra the interior just material wise lags behind a little bit so that's definitely something where you compromise in comparison to, for example, the ZR2. But I think we talked a lot about exterior and interior. We don't really care about that too much. What we want to see is this truck beaten up a little bit. Nigga, nigga, not doing this to direct it. All good. <laughs> Let's go drive. Now out on the trail, starting fast. Brake torque, traction control off, four high. Okay, that's a lot of grip. Woo! Okay, and we want to slow down right away because we're not in a Raptor. Let's put it into two high. And we do want to start off with some faster off-roading. Uh, so when we were in the Raptor, when we were in the ZR2, we could go through all of this fairly quickly. And the Raptor obviously was bouncing up and down and jumping and it like did not care at all. The ZR2 cared a little more, but it was still fairly good. This, I'm not, I'm not bouncing this. I am not bouncing this because this is, more of a package than really <laughs> like a complete performance vehicle. That being said, overall on the slower, well, faster, I mean, off-roading obviously, as long as you keep the front end planted, as long as you keep the front end out, well, on the ground, you'll be fine. You can still go fairly well. It's fairly well damped. Only when you like start accelerating a lot, you'll notice, especially on the braking, that it is a little unstable. So it's just a little more movement compared to especially the ZR2 once you compare them side by side. I'm just bringing up the Raptor not because they're really compare, uh, competitors, but mainly because it's also an F-150 and a great reference. The ZR2 is really what we're looking for here. And the ZR2, even though it was mostly made for trails, has this beat by a ton in this fast off-roading. Like I said, still overall, keep the front planted, you'll be fine. 
See how it moves under braking? <laughs> yeah, just a bit more suspension working. I stabilize myself. And once again, we want to go nice and slow. Like this shot, essentially, like we've done this exact part in the Raptor and in the ZR2, so you can compare how quickly we can go through it. It's still better than like most trucks would ever do but not comparable to those two. But let's go where this is a bit more at home. And that is the trail. Okay, let's put it into deep snow slash sand, which locks our rear diff and gives us four wheel drive and start off in this motocross area. I mean, admittedly, we're a little, a little tiny, tiny bit bigger, but this is a great area to test not only suspension clearance, but also articulation. So let's get over this little hill here and go down. This is nice and slow now, of course, compared to the, let's just call it Baja style running we just did. A lot of like very tight little trails here, which really test the suspension, really test the ground clearance. We're gonna have some nice flexing in our front and rear suspension here. But the trimmer, really doesn't have many problems. You really notice the suspension upgrades here, especially the extended range in terms of like flex we have. That's really where this kind of shines. Now we have this, yeah, a Daytona. Let's, let's call it Daytona corner because we have quite a bit of banking here. So right now we are at 15 degrees. Got to keep it nice and tight. More for 16 degrees, 17 degrees sideways. Gotta be a little careful. What you will notice in these slower speed trails is that the twin turbo 3.5 liter V6, the EcoBoost we have in here, producing 400 horsepower and 500 pound feet of torque, by the way, is it is very nice, especially in the launch. You saw like how much torque we have off the dig, but let's go here, splitting a little. But it can be a little hard to really adjust and get just the right amount of torque that you want. Occasionally I have it happen even on street driving where I start going and I just want to you know, smoothly start going but I'm accidentally like lurching forward because I'm giving way too, I'm getting way more power than I try to ask for. So that's probably mostly a thing of just getting used to the torque that you have with the, with the EcoBoost, but it is certainly noticeable compared to the naturally aspirated V8s we have or the V8 we had in the ZR2, which just gives you a much more linear linear um, power delivery. Meaning, while you might need to rev it out if you really want to have power, it is much easier to be smooth on trails. But speaking of trails, now let's go to the proper trail, the trail where we had the ZR2 and the Bronco Sported. Okay, now we're out on the trail, and you know what that means? window down and for the first time I actually remembered not to put my GoPro on there that's where I usually put my GoPro uh, four high will be sufficient for now uh, we're gonna keep the diff lock because that automatically happens if we put it into deep snow slash sand just gotta watch out with our step right here okay we just had folks come by actually and tell us that this is not gonna fit but <laughs> jokes on them we've already done it twice there's nothing we can't do with a bit of determination and a press button. Speaking of that, let's turn on our mirrors because uh, we're very wide. <laughs> Not quite ZR2 or Raptor wide, but we're wide. So what you will also notice is one big complaint in the ZR2 is that I had no visibility. The front end was even higher on the ZR2, the hood, so I couldn't see out of that and the camera wasn't permanently displayed. Ford, just like in the Raptor, made it so once you're in the off-road modes, you will have your camera set up right here so I can literally drive the trail and especially once we go downhill that'll be 70% of my driving we'll be literally just looking at this screen and hoping that I'm going the right way now this is the spot that you might know from a certain little thing that happened in my ZR2 video let's kick it a little easier how about that we're gonna keep it nice to the right and Down, let's go down, let's go down. Now easy on that downhill section. Get the rear end down. So this is where you might notice what I just mentioned. It's kind of hard to 
to throttle properly. So why don't we go into for high we are and activate the trail control. This is one pedal driving. Well, sorry, the trail, uh, the one pedal driving. So what happens now is if I let off the, uh, if I get on the gas, it'll very slowly lurch forward. And if I let off, the brakes apply again. Now this isn't entirely perfectly um, calibrated, but it does allow us to be a lot smoother here on the trail to very slowly creep forward, which is very nice. So let's get her right to the right hand side. You, you hear revving high, right? So it's still it's still not perfect. I don't quite get what I want either way. I think we've disabled it now, right? Nope, we still have the, okay. Okay, and you can clear the rut. Yep, we're clearing the rut. Wonderful. And now for the steep part. Now for the uh, 20 degree incline. We do want to switch drive modes for that we want to switch over to rock crawl because rock what rock crawl does for us is we're going to put it into four low got to shift into neutral okay and let's see shift to late drive forward and there you heard that we're snapped into low advanced track off now low gears rear diff locked you can do it without low but it does get quite uh like like just at the limit but in low gears we can have Nice and steady climb up this hill. Like I said, we're close to 20 degree incline. This is 18 right now. It always depends on kind of which angle you take, right? We're splitting the path of rocks beneath us and taking it right. And as you can see, I'm literally just driving by the camera here, which I wasn't able to do in the ZR2. And that is a huge difference. Speaking of huge, that's a huge little boulder where you just went across and that was the rear axle. Wonderful. So let's keep creeping up here that's a very rocky section as you probably notice right now and see from the b-roll i show you let's cross actually over to the side okay wonderful and we are good let's actually put it back into four high oh we gotta go to the drive mode first so let's put it into a mud and reds will do for now and now we gotta go below five kilometers an hour and shift to neutral, four by four shift in progress and we're back into four high. Okay, let's keep going. As you already noticed, I need to apply much more throttle, but this is fairly simple. The grabber tires, the, uh, the general tire grabbers do a great job of giving us all the grip. The four wheel drive system very evenly distributes power. It is not a struggle at all. Okay, let's go down hill. We keep it in deep snow and sand for high. Diff lock, uh, we're just gonna keep enabled. That's totally fine. And now we can actually use our trail control. So that's essentially cruise control just for the trails. I set it to five kilometers an hour. Let's set it to six. And now I don't have to do any braking. I don't have to do any steering. I'm uh, sorry, <laughs> I don't have to do any braking or accelerating. I just have to do the steering. The truck. The tremor here will manage everything else. It'll keep us nice and smooth driving across the trail. And I can just focus on not banging this truck up. A very good feature, uh, very common these days in, in off-road focused vehicles, but that doesn't mean that it's not extremely good. Now this is actually getting a little fast. Let's set it down to uh, five kilometers an hour. Get that decline you see, feel it rocking us around. And applying a lot of brakes, keeping those five kilometers down very well, but actually, you know what? I want to drive myself. That's more fun. <laughs> so let's get it around here. We do want to avoid that little rock we went across a second ago. And that's a bigger rock. There we go. Had to slide off that for a second. And now nice and slow. This is where we have the most suspension flexing in the whole video going downhill on this section nice and slow we want to go okay also once again very steep downhill section and we're good that means time to put our mirrors in check if any quads or full of fours are coming by no that's fine now by this rut which means we will need to use our side walls to get grip on the side of this dirt area and keep all the flowers out and the plants out of our cabin 
and here we go now for the hardest part keep it left watch it once again the camera is giving me so much visibility that's we are actually going over it perfect and easy that's how you take a trail honestly no problem whatsoever we could push it a little further uh, but I don't want to get this stuck <laughs> we've been already doing quite a lot here it never really translates on video unfortunately trust me this is a lot harder than it might look for you guys uh, but the tremor is faring exceptionally well in terms of trails this is really good I have to do section that's a little tougher and we're out of the trail but we got one more little trick up our sleeves which this tremor conveniently borrowed from the Bronco and which the Raptor doesn't get so let's say we're on a trail we don't have much space to turn around well instead of doing a four five six a billion eight uh, point turn what you do is you activate trail turn assist when you're in four high or four low you turn in you hear something and you just give it a bit of gas and now we got the rotation it took a little while to get it going but as you can see <laughs> we can literally do donuts on the inside which on a trail is super useful of course we want to turn it back off now that we've done a full spin here which obviously is not the use case but just to showcase that but no this got a bunch of tricks up its, up its sleeve so let's see if this is worth eighty-six thousand dollars, and if you should take it compared to the zr2 but before that we want to have a little send to end it <laughs> okay final thoughts it is okay final thoughts on the 2022 ford f-150 tremor and i gotta be honest i really enjoyed my week with it i think it is a great truck that looks fantastic it has for the most part a pretty nice interior and once you go off-roading it is actually quite capable now of course it is not as capable as a raptor or as capable as a zr2 both of them obliterated in terms of baja running and once you get on the trails it's just a little more capable the zr2 for example even if it has less visibility obviously the flocking front and rear diff which just makes it that bit better including more ground clearance now of course the raptor is in a whole another dimension if we talk about pricing but the problem that this tremor aspect faces is that the cost is so many, tiny different between the zr2 and it that is hard to recommend aspect this comes out at $86,015 Canadian which is $83 less than a ZR2 and a ZR2 is nicer inside the ZR2 has better tech the ZR2 is more capable on Baja running the ZR2 is more capable when you go into the trails and the ZR2 rides nicer in daily driving yes this one is quicker yes the fuel economy of the tremor is a little better and yes if that's what something you count on this can tow up to 10,900 pounds which is 2,000 pounds more than the ZR2 but I just can't tell you to get the tremors aspect because it just doesn't make sense when the ZR2 exists but the tremor starts at $65,000 this is fully optioned and there's a mid-trim level package you can buy which puts it at around 75 grand meaning it is around 11 grand less than a ZR2 and then we're actually looking at a truck that has a decent value good towing good daily driving nice cabin and quite good capabilities off-road and that's I think when you can look at the tremor and say okay that might be a truck worth buying but if you get it top spec I'm sorry ZR2 takes the cake with that being said thank you so much for watching I hope you enjoyed it if you enjoyed it please make sure to like and subscribe I'll put you the Raptor and ZR2 review on screen if you want to check them out right away and other than that thanks again for watching remember to love yourself even when times are a little tough and I hope I'll see you in the next one thank you and goodbye